Okay, uh, here we go. First speaker, Mr. Jordan Baum. Thank you very much. So, uh, just to make clear, anyone who's waiting for Guy Fox to blow up Parliament, we're not actually uh, here to do that today, so uh, sorry, no light show rained out. We are here uh, to send uh, Parliament a message, however, that we're still outraged about the imminent sale of BC to Ottawa, and we're not going to forget about it between now and July. The people of BC have been duped into sending all of their ta tax dollars to Ottawa. And the Liberal strategy for, ride it, for riding out the storm is to announce it, then sit on their hands until the heat dies down. But with some help from a former Premier, we've been given a chance to fight back. And the flames beneath the Liberals' feet have never been higher. Bill Van Der Zandt's Fight HST group is preparing a citizen's initiative to put the Campbell Mafia in check. And the BC Refederation Party is 100% behind it. This initiative will give Campbell a choice. Either drop the HST and let BC be responsible for BC, or give us a provincial referendum on the issue. A referendum is real democracy in action. A referendum would give British Columbians a real voice on this disgusting tax. Why are the Liberals so worried about real democracy? Because right off the bat, they knew 85% of this province would be dead set against it. So why would the government even give it a chance to begin with? Greed. They have driven this province into so many consecutive deficits that they decided to sell us out to Ottawa just to lighten up their track record a little bit. What's the cost of BC Seoul? According to Gordon Campbell, $1.6 billion. Here's the folly in that. Ottawa is giving the BC Liberals 1.6 billion. In exchange, BC combines the PST and GST into the HST. And they create a new acronym for it because the more acronyms that are involved, the more complex it sounds, the more cross-eyed the public gets, and the less questions they have to answer. So what Ottawa is doing is giving BC one lump sum, one time only, one time deal, and in return, BC sends all of its tax money to Ottawa. That's for the foreseeable future, which could be centuries. Who do you think is getting the short end of the stick? Are we honestly expected to believe that Ottawa is just giving us one and a half billion dollars out of the goodness of their hearts? The truth is that Ottawa is giving BC one and a half million because they know they'll make much more than that back in the long run. Here's another way to look at it. I make a deal with my roommate. I say, I'm going to buy a new coffee maker for us, and in exchange, you buy the coffee for the rest of the time that we live here. Who benefits? Unless he moves out next week, I do. Because the $50 coffee maker I bought is nothing compared to the $150 he spent on beans in the first year. Now consider this, how long are BC and Ottawa going to be roommates for? Probably a lot longer than me and my friend I screwed over. And the extent of the disproportion grows and grows over time. So I need to make clear that I'm not hinting at separation, I'm talking about protecting our sovereignty. There's a huge difference between leaving our country behind and protecting ourselves from our federal government, making sure they don't take advantage of us. So how do we go about doing that? If you go to fighthst.com and find out how you can help save your province, uh, you'll be able to sign up and volunteer, collect some signatures for the Citizens Initiative. If you can't volunteer for whatever reason, at least sign the petition. There are more than enough angry citizens out there to stop it from happening. But we need to make sure it gets down on paper. We need to beat our politicians at their own game and make sure the initiative takes off. Former Premier Bill Van Der Zand is leading the fight, so if we've ever had a chance at a citizen's initiative succeeding, it's probably going to be with the guy who's played by their rules and won before. Another thing you can do to help 
is take the local news with a grain of salt. Watch it objectively. They'll tell you that it's unlikely we can change what our government has already decided. Our democratic government. There's a paradox for you right there. Democracy, and we can't change their minds. What you need to remember is that HST will benefit big corporations. And one of those corporations already owns most of the media in this province. So watch it objectively. We laugh at the Americans for watching the sensationalist outlets like CNN and Fox News. And they probably laugh at us for listening to Bill Good. Despite what their political analysts say, the HST can be stopped. There's plenty of HST, anti-HST anti sentiment in BC. We just need to channel it the right way, which is getting as many volunteers to sign up as possible. Again, the website is fighthst.com. Uh, we're here on the 5th of November to show the similarity between British Columbia's need of change and a fictional society's need of change. V for Vendetta showed us that an oppressed government can rise as one and force a corrupt government out. We have the potential to make this HST war end any way we choose. We can do nothing and let it end like high noon with lonely Sheriff Van Der Zand struggling to fight our battles for us. Or, instead, we can make it end the way V for Vendetta did, short of leveling a landmark. With hundreds of thousands of people speaking out against the HST by signing the Fight HST initiative. The BC